Thank you all for joining this Facebook Live event. We're excited to have you here. We look forward to using the next 30 minutes to provide insights about caring for teens with Dravet syndrome, sharing some real life experiences, and providing information about the safety and efficacy of Fintepla, or Finfluramine, a prescription medication used to treat the seizures associated with Dravet syndrome in patients two years of age and older. Because of the risk of heart valve problems and high blood pressure in the arteries of the lungs, Fintepla is only available through a restricted access program called the Fintepla Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategy, or REMS program. This is a safety program that the FDA requires so that anyone taking Fintepla will be closely monitored prior to and during treatment. We will discuss this in more detail a bit later. If you would like to ask a question during the program, you can submit the question through Facebook Messenger. Please understand that we will only be able to answer general questions about Fintepla or Dravet syndrome. We will not be able to answer specific medical questions and cannot answer questions about treatments other than Fintepla. With that, I'd like to kick things off with introductions. My name is Beck Reyes. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner at the UCLA Mattel Children's Hospital, where we specialize in managing kids with rare forms of epilepsy, such as Dravet syndrome. My area of interest happens to be pediatric transitions. That's the transition from the pediatric healthcare setting to the adult healthcare setting. I am joined today by Dr. Cindy Seinfeld and Bethany Gehring. I'll allow each of them to briefly introduce themselves. Dr. Seinfeld, why don't you start? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Cindy Seinfeld. I am a doctor of osteopathic medicine and the director of epilepsy at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital in Hollywood, Florida. We are a comprehensive epilepsy center and a comprehensive Dravet center. So we see a wide range of epilepsy patients and we see numerous patients with Dravet. Thank you, Dr. Seinfeld. Bethany? Good evening, my name is Bethany Gehring. I live with my husband, Brad, our twin daughters, Kai and Taylor, and our son, Caleb, in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Our daughter, Kai, enjoys spending time with our family, tumbling at the gym with her twin sister, cuddling with her service dog, London, and everything Disney. Kai is also living with Dravet syndrome. She was four months old when she experienced her first seizure. After numerous seizures and trying various anti-seizure medications, her neurologist recommended a genetic test which is how we found out that she has Dravet syndrome. Kai is now officially a teenager. As many of us know as parents, the transition from childhood to teenager isn't always easy. For parents of teens with Dravet syndrome, knowing what to expect and what changes may lay ahead is helpful in getting the support and resources you need to help. And that's what we're here to talk about today. There's no one size fits all answer for what to expect when your child with Dravet syndrome becomes a teenager but I'm gonna share my experiences with Kai and hope that you find them helpful. As many of you caring for a teen with Dravet syndrome may be able to relate to, Kai, who's now 13, still likes things that are more typical of a young child, like snuggling with me and Brad and characters like Peppa Pig, Paw Patrol, and Disney princesses. However, she also has some behaviors that are typical of many teenagers. For example, she wants to be independent, and she has, more set, she has a lot more to say over what she wears and what activities she participates in. She also exhibits moodiness as many teens do at this age. The most difficult part is that she cannot express herself as well as a typical teenager might. She has the emotions of a teen, but functions at the level of a five to eight year old. And then there are the physical changes that all children go through as they reach puberty. For Kai, we've been thinking through how to build hygiene into her routine, like using deodorant and shaving. We found that through play, we've been able to prepare her for some of these things. For example, we got a plastic pretend shaving set so she could practice shaving her armpits. Kai also tends to copy her twin sister, which makes it a little easier when it comes to learning how to do new things. Kai has not yet finished her, not yet had her first period, but menstruation is something else we've been preparing for. Since she is already accustomed to wearing a pull-up at night, we're hopeful that wearing one day and night during her period won't be a difficult change. Thank you for sharing all of that, Bethany. And it's worthwhile noting that there are healthcare providers who can talk about some of the changes that might be occurring and help you navigate and determine ways to discuss them with your teen. A pediatric gynecologist, for example, can be a great resource for those caring for girls with Dravet syndrome who are reaching their teenage years. In my practice, I've gotten a number of questions about whether puberty can impact triggers and overall seizure control. Bethany, have you noticed any changes in Kai's seizures or seizure frequency as she reaches her teens? 
Kai seizures have unfortunately increased as she's aged. What is interesting is that Kai doesn't realize that there's anything different between her and the kids who don't have Dravet syndrome. In fact, she often doesn't even realize when she's had a seizure and sometimes needs to be told it happened. Because her seizures typically happen in the evening or at night, she just goes to sleep for the night and wakes up the next morning ready for a new day. She also seems to have more seizures when she gets excited. We don't want to deprive her of having fun and experiencing joy, so we still engage in activities she loves, like going to the beach or playing with her dad when he comes home from work. But we try to balance the level of excitement with what we know will, will trigger her. We are also prepared in case a seizure does occur. As we go through these changes in her condition and Kai continues to grow, one thing that's on my mind is transitioning her to adult healthcare providers. She currently goes to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and we're hoping they'll keep her as a patient for as long as possible, at least till she's 21. So we feel like we still have a little time to keep thinking about that. I would say that's a realistic expectation in terms of when the transition from a pediatric to an adult healthcare provider would take place. Dr. Seinfeld, do you agree? Yes, Beck. Typically, we transfer a patient with Dravet syndrome to an adult neurologist somewhere between 18 to 22 years of age. Prior to this, there are things as a pediatric healthcare provider that we can do to start preparing the families for the transition. At this time in a teen's life, it's important to discuss topics such as puberty, the physical, behavioral, and cognitive changes that occur associated with puberty. And during the teenage years, we often see more of the comorbidities of epilepsy, like anxiety and depression. This may mean that a teen's medical team has to evolve. For example, we may recommend that families work with a psychiatrist or a behavioral therapist if they're not already working with them. Sometimes involving other specialists is an important part of the process in identifying the behavioral and cognitive changes that are Dravet syndrome related or simply that of a normal teenage development. Thank you, Dr. Seinfeld. I find it helpful to give teens time alone with their healthcare providers so they can address any issues they may be having. It's also a good time to discuss any high-risk behavior they may be thinking about or are involved in. This could be things like being taken advantage of by other teens and being more vulnerable to abuse. We often see an increase in nocturnal seizures in teenagers with Dravet syndrome. The resulting lack of sleep can impact your teen in many ways. School is also a very important topic because parents often want to know how they can help advocate for their teen academically, socially, as well as medically. I work closely with schools to help establish plans so they are equipped to support seizure management, have a seizure action plan in place, and are prepared to manage social and behavioral issues as they arise. Having an individualized education plan in place, such as an IEP, is also a great help for parents to have specific supports and goals documented. Thinking into the future, planning for what's after high school, what community resources are available, and what life skills are most needed, is also something I talk about with schools and parents. Those are good points, Beck. We've been pushing hard for Kai's school to focus more on teaching her life skills and preparing her to be more independent. Applied Behavioral Analysis, or ABA therapy, is an approach that we've been using at home, and we're using it to work with Kai on things like managing emotions, transitioning between tasks, and following directions. Even though Kai will always need adult supervision, it's important to us that she learns how to do things for herself. Kai recently went shopping with her grandmom and me. We gave her a purse with her birthday money in it and let her make her own decisions on what she wanted to buy. It was a wonderful afternoon for all of us. That's a great story, Bethany. Thanks for bringing that up. The topic of establishing a level of independence is an important one for parents of teenagers with Dravet syndrome. One of the biggest ways I see the balance between supervision and independence playing out with teen patients is getting them to take their medication. Sometimes they won't take it because they don't like how it makes them feel. However, it's not always obvious why they might not like taking their medication because they don't or can't always communicate that. Additionally, identifying side effects can be confusing at this time. Teenagers can have behavioral problems and it can be difficult to determine if they are Dravet syndrome related or hormone related. Do you agree, Dr. Seinfeld? I completely agree. Understanding the difference is very important. For example, a young woman who experiences abdominal cramps, it's essential to know, is it because of her menstrual cycle? Is it a medication side effect? Or is it something unrelated that's causing her to have pain? Speaking of medication, this leads us into another topic of discussion related into the importance of seizure reduction in teens with Dravet syndrome. 
I've often observed that though the overall treatment goals may not change as the patient enters their teenager years, the motivation behind those goals may shift. For example, uncontrolled seizures can hinder a teen's ability to participate in activities or be with friends, which becomes even more important during the transition to adolescence. Bethany, would you be willing to talk a little bit about what it's like um, having Dravet syndrome for Kai from a social perspective and whether that's changed in any way now that she's a teen? Of course, Beck. Going into her teenage years, we found that Kai's peers are more aware of her differences. Teens can be cruel, so of course I worry about how, how Kai might be treated. There are a lot of great kids out there, though. For example, the kids who are friends with Taylor, Kai's twin sister, are always nice and inclusive with Kai. But I worry about the other kids who don't know her. We make it a point to keep Kai involved in school and youth group activities so that she has a good support system, which includes kids who know her and enjoy being around her. As her peers get older, they also get more emotional when they see Kai having a seizure. They understand the seriousness of it. So we, are, we have to be prepared to manage that aspect too. Thanks for sharing some of Kai's experiences, Bethany. As we've been discussing, there are several new challenges as your child becomes a teenager, which likely means your treatment decision-making process will involve new factors. As a healthcare provider, I often work with families when they are considering a new treatment option for their teen. I encourage families to tell their healthcare provider about the number and types of seizures that their teen is experiencing, as well as about how Dravet syndrome is affecting their day-to-day -day lives because it helps when we discuss treatment options. Since we're talking about treatment options, this may be a good time to talk about Fintepla and how it may help teens with Dravet syndrome. Dr. Seinfeld, would you be able to start us off by providing a bit of background information on Fintepla? Certainly. Fenfluramine, which is the active ingredient in Fintepla, is backed by decades of research. Fintepla was approved in 2020 and is used to treat seizures associated with Dravet syndrome in patients two years and older, meaning we can use it in children starting at the age of two, teens, and adults with Dravet syndrome. Fintepla is an oral solution and can be taken by mouth, with or without food. It can be given through a nasogastric tube or through a G-tube. And importantly, it's incompatible, it is compatible with the ketogenic diet. The dosing of this medicine is based on weight and it's flexible, meaning we can start low and increase it over time. Adding it to an existing treatment plan does not typically require a change in the dose of most other anti-seizure medications. The only medication that may impact the dosing is steropentol and we'll discuss that later. Thanks, Dr. Seinfeld. While I'm counseling families as they consider changes in treatment, I find that those who have a child 12 years or older are sometimes more hesitant to make changes to their medications. Most often, the decision comes down to seizure control. What can you tell us about Fintepla and how it may reduce seizure frequency? Well, Fintepla was approved by the FDA based on two phase three clinical studies, and there were 341 patients age two and up with Dravet syndrome who were treated with Fintepla. To answer your question regarding how effective Fintepla was in reducing seizures in individuals two and up with Dravet syndrome, I'm gonna give the details from study one. For context, participants entering study one were taking as many as four anti-seizure medications or treatments and were on average having up to 41 seizures per month. The higher doses of Fintepla, which are 0.7 milligrams per kilogram per day, changed this for many study participants. When added to their other anti-seizure treatments, Fintepla on average reduced the monthly seizures by 79% compared to when the study started. In contrast, those who received placebo, which means they did not get any active drug in combination with their current anti-seizure medications, experienced only a 16% reduction in their monthly seizures. In addition to discussing the reduction in monthly seizures, it's important to share the results of the length of seizure-free periods. In that same study, when Fintepla was added to the current treatment plan, 50% or half of the patients taking the higher doses experienced a seizure-free period lasting at least 21 days, compared to an eight-day seizure-free period seen in the placebo group. A long-term study to continue learning about Fintepla's seizure reduction and safety was also completed. 94% of the patients from the two phase three studies chose to transition to this long-term study and remain on Fintepla. Wow. That says a lot when so many patients choose to remain in the study and on Fintepla. Dr. Seinfeld, what are some of the side effects of Fintepla? So as you can see on your screen, some of the common side effects include things like diarrhea, infection, low energy, vomiting, 
And as Beck mentioned earlier, because of the risks of heart valve problems and high blood pressure in the arteries of the lungs, Fintepla is only available through a restricted program called Fintepla Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategies Program, which is their REMS program. Before your teen receives Fintepla, your healthcare provider will make sure you understand how to take this medication safely. In addition to the common side effects, Fintepla can also cause things like decreased appetite, decreased weight, sleepiness, lack of energy, and also like all other anti-seizure drugs, it may cause suicidal thoughts or actions. You should never stop Fintepla abruptly without first talking to your healthcare provider. And it's important to note that I've not shared all of the side effects. Thanks, Dr. Seinfeld. And thank you for making us aware of the important safety information for Fintepla. I recognize this is a lot of information to digest at once. This and other important safety information can be found in the Fintepla medication guide, which is available on this platform and at fintepla.com. You can also reach out to your teen's healthcare provider or pharmacist if you'd like more information. It is important that you discuss all of your teen's medical conditions with their healthcare provider before they receive Fintepla. If your teen experiences any side effects while taking Fintepla that bother them or do not go away, you should tell their healthcare provider. Bethany, what was it like when your family considered Fintepla for Kai? From the very beginning, my husband and Brad and I were hesitant about putting Kai on medication because we were aware of the developmental delays some treatments can cause. Even once we started her on treatments, medication changes became such a point of anxiety for us because we never knew whether a treatment was gonna help or hurt her. We were lucky to have found a neurologist who was involved in the clinical trial for Fintepla. Kai started taking Fintepla as part of the open label extension study in March of 2020. She's experienced longer seizure-free periods since starting Fintepla which has been a huge relief for the whole family and has allowed us more time to have family outings. Of course, every teen is different and this is just Kai's experience, but we want other families affected by Dravet syndrome to know that there are treatment options that may help with seizure reduction. Thanks for sharing your experiences, Bethany. No doubt the information will be helpful for families making their decisions with their healthcare providers. Dr. Seinfeld, how do you help your patients when they're starting on Fintepla? That's a great question. When my patients and their families consider starting Fintepla, I find it's helpful to talk through what to expect when initiating a new treatment. I talk to them about the benefits for patients and the families because of the profound seizure reduction shown in these clinical trials. I also talk to them about the REMS program that we spoke about earlier. This REMS program was created to monitor and detect potential cardiovascular problems early by requiring echocardiograms or echoes. Patients are required to get an echo when before starting Fintepla, then every six months during that treatment. If for any reason the treatment is stopped, then one less echo is required within three to six months of discontinuing the Fintepla. I let the caregivers know that none of the 341 patients who took Fintepla during the clinical trials developed problems with the valves of the heart or high blood pressure in the arteries of the lung, and this included patients that were treated for up to three years. However, the Fintepla REMS program can help to identify those problems early before symptoms develop. In this program, the family is assigned a care coordinator who serves as their point of contact. This is a great resource for patients and for my staff as the care coordinator helps to navigate the insurance process, financial assistance, helps with providing nursing and pharmacy support to the families as needed, and it makes sure that the families and the patients, they're going for their echoes and getting their refills, there's no interruption in their treatment. That sounds like a great program and something that would help families with teens starting on Fintepla navigate the process. I know more information on this program is available on Fintepla.com. Before we close, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. We have time for a few questions. Dr. Seinfeld, this first one is for you. One caregiver wants to know if their teen can stay on their current anti-seizure medications while taking Fintepla. That's a really great, great question. It's important to know that adding Fintepla to a current treatment plan does not require a change in dose of most anti-seizure medications. And this includes the common ones for Dreve, such as Valproate, Clobazam, Topiramate, and Cannabidiol. Fintepla also works well with other treatments, such as the vagus nerve stimulator and the ketogenic diet. If a patient is also taking steropental, then the maximum dose of Fintepla does need to be lowered. Our next question relates to seizure control. 
This caregiver says, it seems like my teen has been experiencing more seizures as he goes through puberty. How do I know if this increase will last and would Fintepla be a treatment option? Um, this one, I think I can answer. Uh, every teen is different and may react differently to hormones and medications. While we do not know if Fintepla is right for your teen, we can recommend that you talk to your healthcare provider about whether it would be a good option. If a healthcare provider is not REM certified, he or she can go to the REMS tab on the fintepla.com for more information. As Dr. Seinfeld mentioned earlier in clinical trials, when added to their current anti-seizure treatments, 57.5% of those patients taking the higher dose of Fintepla experienced at least a 75% reduction in monthly seizures, compared to a 2.6% reduction in the placebo group. In the same study, when Fintepla was added to the current anti-seizure treatment plan, half of the patients taking the higher dose experienced a seizure-free period lasting at least 21 days compared to an eight-day seizure freedom period in 50% of the participants in the placebo group. And that's a lot of information to take in um, when considering starting or changing treatment. Adolescence is a time when a lot of things are changing for your teen, which can, of course, impact the whole family as well. This may be a good time to talk to your healthcare provider to establish a plan for changes that lie ahead, including puberty and the transition to adult providers. Bethany, are there any words of advice you'd be willing to share for families who have a teen with Dravet syndrome? Of course. I'd say it's important to find a balance between letting your teen be independent and live the life that they want and keep them safe. When they have Dravet syndrome, there's a level of supervision that may always be needed, but you also have to give them the independence to grow, reach their potential, and have a joyful life. That's great advice. In closing, thank you for joining us today, and I'd like to thank Dr. Seinfeld and Bethany as well for sharing their experiences. To learn more about Fintepla, you can also visit fintepla.com or sign up to receive more information directly to your email. We also encourage you to follow the Fintepla Facebook page to stay up to date with news and information and reminders about upcoming events. Thank you again for joining and have a great night. Indication. Fintepla is a prescription medicine used to treat seizures associated with Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome in patients two years of age and older. It is not known if Fintepla is safe and effective in children less than two years of age. Important safety information. Fintepla can cause serious side effects, including 1. Problems with the valves in the heart, valvular heart disease, and high blood pressure in the arteries of the lungs, pulmonary arterial hypertension, have been associated with fenfluramine, the active ingredient in Fintepla. Your healthcare provider will do a test called an echocardiogram to check your heart and to evaluate for high blood pressure in the arteries of the lungs before you start taking Fintepla. Again, every six months during treatment, and one time three to six months after you take your last dose of Fintepla. Call your healthcare provider right away if you develop any of these signs and symptoms of heart or lung problems during treatment with Fintepla. Shortness of breath, tiredness or weakness, especially with increased activity, lightheadedness or fainting, swollen ankles or feet, chest pain, sensations of a rapid, fluttering heartbeat, palpitations, irregular pulse, bluish color of your lips and skin, cyanosis. Because of the risk of heart valve problems, valvular heart disease, and high blood pressure in arteries of lungs, pulmonary arterial hypertension, Fintepla is only available through a restricted program called the Fintepla Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategy, REMS, program. Before you or your child receives Fintepla, your healthcare provider or pharmacist will make sure you understand how to take Fintepla safely. If you have any questions about Fintepla, ask your healthcare provider. Visit www.fintepla.rems.com or call 1-877-964-3649. 2. Decreased appetite and decreased weight. 
decreased appetite, and decreased weight are both serious and common side effects of Fintepla in people with Dravet syndrome, DS, or Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, LGS. Your weight should be checked regularly during your treatment with Fintepla. Your healthcare provider may need to make changes to your Fintepla dose if your weight decreases. In some cases, Fintepla may need to be stopped. 3. Sleepiness, sedation, and lack of energy, lethargy. These are both serious and common side effects of Fintepla in people with Dravet syndrome, DS, or Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, LGS. Taking Fintepla with central nervous system, CNS, depressants, including alcohol, may increase sleepiness. Do not drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Fintepla affects you. 4. Like all other anti-epileptic drugs, Fintepla may cause suicidal thoughts or actions in a very small number of people, about 1 in 500. Call your healthcare provider right away if you have any of these symptoms, especially if they are new, worse, or worry you. Thoughts about suicide or dying, trouble sleeping, insomnia, attempts to commit suicide, new or worse irritability, new or worse depression, acting aggressive, being angry or violent, new or worse anxiety, acting on dangerous impulses, feeling agitated or restless, an extreme increase in activity and talking, mania, panic attacks, other unusual changes in behavior or mood. How can I watch for early symptoms of suicidal thoughts and actions? Pay attention to any changes, especially sudden changes, in mood, behaviors, thoughts, or feelings. Keep all follow-up visits with your healthcare provider as scheduled. Suicidal thoughts or actions can be caused by things other than medicines. If you have suicidal thoughts or actions, your healthcare provider may check for other causes. 5. Do not stop taking Fintepla without first talking to your healthcare provider. Stopping a seizure medicine such as Fintepla can suddenly cause you to have seizures more often or seizures that do not stop, status epilepticus. Call your healthcare provider between visits as needed, especially if you are worried about symptoms. Do not take Fintepla if you are allergic to fenfluramine or any of the ingredients in Fintepla. See below for a complete list of ingredients in Fintepla. Are taking or have stopped taking medicines called monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, in the last 14 days. This may cause a serious or life-threatening problem called serotonin syndrome. If you are not sure whether or not you are taking one of these medicines, contact your healthcare provider. Before taking Fintepla, tell your healthcare provider about all of your medical conditions, including if you have heart problems, have or have had weight loss, have or have had depression, mood problems, or suicidal thoughts or behavior have kidney problems, have liver problems, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant. Tell your healthcare provider right away if you become pregnant while taking Fintepla. You and your healthcare provider will decide if you should take Fintepla while you are pregnant. If you become pregnant while taking Fintepla, talk to your healthcare provider about registering with the North American Anti-Epileptic Drug Pregnancy Registry. You can enroll in this registry by calling 1-888-233-2334 or go to www.aedpregnancyregistry.org. The purpose of this registry is to collect information about the safety of anti-epileptic drugs during pregnancy. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known if Fintepla passes into your breast milk. Talk to your healthcare provider about the best way to feed your baby while taking Fintepla. Tell your healthcare provider about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over the counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. Know the medicines you take. Keep a list of them to show your healthcare provider or pharmacist when you get a new medicine. How should I take Fintepla? Read the instructions for use for information on the right way to use Fintepla. 
Take Fintepla exactly as your healthcare provider tells you to take it. Your healthcare provider will tell you how much Fintepla to take and when to take it. Fintepla may be taken with or without food. Measure your dose of Fintepla using the dosing syringe that is provided by the pharmacy. Do not use a household teaspoon or tablespoon. Fintepla can be given through gastric and nasogastric feeding tubes. What should I avoid while taking Fintepla? Do not drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Fintepla affects you. Fintepla may cause you to feel sleepy. What are the possible side effects of Fintepla? Fintepla may cause serious side effects, including See, Fintepla can cause serious side effects above. Serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is a life-threatening problem that can happen in people taking Fintepla, especially if Fintepla is taken with certain other medicines, including antidepressant medicines called SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, and MAOIs, tryptophan, lithium, antipsychotics, St. John's Ward, dextromethorphan, tramadol. Call your healthcare provider right away if you have any of the following symptoms of serotonin syndrome. Mental status changes such as seeing things that are not there, hallucinations, agitation or coma, changes in blood pressure, tight muscles, fast heartbeat, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, high body temperature, trouble walking. High blood pressure, hypertension. Hypertension is both a serious and common side effect. Fintepla can cause your blood pressure to increase, even if you have never had high blood pressure before. Your healthcare provider will check your blood pressure while you are taking Fintepla. Increased pressure in your eyes, glaucoma. Symptoms of glaucoma may include red eyes, seeing halos or bright colors around lights, nausea or vomiting, decreased vision, eye pain or discomfort, blurred vision. If you have any of these symptoms, call your healthcare provider right away. The most common side effects of Fintepla when used to treat Dravet syndrome, DS, include decreased appetite, diarrhea, low energy, respiratory infection, decreased weight, fever, constipation, abnormal echocardiogram, sleepiness, problems with movement, balance, and walking, increased drooling, increased blood pressure, vomiting, falls, seizures that do not stop, weakness. The most common side effects of Fintepla when used to treat Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, LGS, include diarrhea, tiredness, vomiting, sleepiness, decreased appetite. These are not all the possible side effects of Fintepla. For more information, ask your healthcare provider or pharmacist. Tell your healthcare provider if you have any side effect that bothers you or that does not go away. Call your doctor for medical advice about side effects. You may report side effects to the FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088. Keep Fintepla and all medicines out of the reach of children. General information about the safe and effective use of Fintepla. Medicines are sometimes prescribed for purposes other than those listed in a medication guide. Do not use Fintepla for a condition for which it was not prescribed. Do not give Fintepla to other people, even if they have the same symptoms that you have. It may harm them. What are the ingredients in Fintepla? Active ingredient, fenfluramine hydrochloride. Inactive ingredients, cherry flavor, citric acid, ethylparaben, hydroxyethylcellulose, methylparaben, potassium citrate, sucralose, and water. Fintepla contains no ingredient made from gluten-containing grain, wheat, barley, or rye, and contains not more than 0.1% of carbohydrates, which is from the cherry flavoring. Please see full prescribing information, including medication guide, for additional important safety information on Fintepla at fintepla.com.